it's absolutely fine. At least we have good discard targets, right? And let's heal just to show that we were nowhere near that. Hello everyone, it's Love here and today I'm really proud to show you guys this deck. It's a Boros control, it's not the same Invoke, Reanim, no, no, no. This is an actual control deck, you play it nearly the same as you do with like Demir or something like this. And it has a very nice team of healing you. You can heal so much with this deck, You, it's actually unbelievable. I will show you during the intro probably some game that I play unranked, how high you can get with this deck on the, on the HP. Remember your training. So we have Sacred Fires card that nobody seems to be using, but I find it's really interesting. It's two mana, shock basically, that heals you for two, but it has flashback. Uh, where it really shines is answering Fable, because first you can just go for the small token with the goblin, and late game you can actually kill Kikijiku with this. Six mana is okay in the late game, because you are usually scrambling together with your opponent for value. Uh, other than this, Harlem Battle Him card that literally nobody played since like a month, I think. I never seen this card ever used. Uh, this is 3 mana removal, deals 4 damage to target creature or planewalker. You cannot target face, but you don't care. If you pay 1 mana kicker, you gain 4 life, so it's basically 4 mana, 4 damage, 4 life. Uh, if you combine all of this together with Union of the Third Path, uh, Wandering Emperor, Archangel of Wrath, man, you can heal so insane amount of life that you will basically never die. Uh, as long as you have control, you just need mana to play all your spells and with 4 Bangbusters, Flashback from Sacred Fire, Celestus uh, Cycling and Fable Cycling, you have so much value in the deck. You also have double big score and Jaya just for extra draw and I added one Karn. I think it's worth it, but you can switch it to Jaya or maybe even to Emperor. But I wanted some extra cardo. And at this point you just keep going, you are burning every Planewalker, everything on the board, every creature. And that is the idea for the deck, I really enjoyed it. And the big problem for the deck I would say is shorter, because as you can see this deals 4, this deals 2. So. Yeah, that's why we have Mart. This is some kind of reasonable answer. Usually they keep attacking, so you have the Emperor. And if anything fails, you just have Farewells. And with life gain, you have way more time than usually with like Demir. So I think you, you will enjoy at least playing a longer games. And he, with this deck, you don't die very fast. So you can enjoy some magic. Uh, if you enjoy this deck and if you like some new stuff, because I literally did not see anyone play anything like this, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps. It shows that you like this kind of fresh decks and it really helps to grow the channel. And you know what? It makes me the most happy person ever if I see those new subscribers. So with that being said, let's go into the games. Tell me what you think and I really think you will enjoy them. And against Agro, if we draw planes, that's a decent hand. A decent one, not the great one. We are on the draw and we have Celestus. Without Celestus, I would move on this one. Well, maybe. Maybe it's actually a different deck. I expected Mono Red, <laughs> not gonna lie. And to be absolutely honest, this draw is absolutely amazing. Because against Control, that's the last moment you can play uh, your card advantage card without it being countered. Alright, he has the Bangbuster, but we'll do a little bit of cheating. And you know, I have the Bangbuster, but you don't. But you don't. Oh, that felt dirty. Like, we got a little lucky at the at the start. We drew the planes and we drew the bankbuster. And he also had all the tap lands. Sure, that. I mean, that's definitely a card that matters. So, we need to think how to solve it. I think this will be... Like, we could go for the union. But I think getting extra mana of Celestus is way more important. And we can still draw... Uh, we will get a lot of damage, but we can recoup all of this. That's some interesting lands you have there. Uh, I have to say, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Bring some memories, that's for sure. And we will draw cards, so we are at 10 already. And our opponent 
let's see how many counter spells he has. Alright, this definitely won't help us kill exactly short that. But I don't need so many lands. Also, uh, he's really gambling on the Emperor every single turn. Alright. Okay, I have an idea. I think it, it will be pretty good. It's not easy, but you can make it work, definitely. But yeah, sure, that is absolute brick. Alright, that's an attack. He's going in, he do doesn't care about the Emperor. And that's the play, because if he counters, he will counter the second spell, right? Why would he counter the first one? However, the second spell cannot be countered because it's an ability. When he had the choice, he didn't go for it. And that's probably something I hope he did not expect. It's still Grixis. I think he has made this appear at least. Fail, sure. Well, this is really good target for our cards. So we can start to finally go into... Oh, that was a, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. I want to double spell probably this turn. I mean, let's play like this. And see if it goes through. I should probably tax him his main face, to be absolutely honest with you guys. Man, I want to flip so much, but... Do I care about the damage? What is the direct damage except sure that... No, not much. I think we can make it work. I misplayed. I should have done this as the first spell. And then play the land and, you know, or do all this stuff. So I think I missed two life. I could heal four. But it should be okay. And I... Oh my god. And now I should probably draw in response. I'm playing really bad right now. Jaya is really good. So Farewell is staying. Smoldering Egg is probably the easiest to remove for him. Jaya is up really, really strong here. Uh, look at his mana. This is Involve Despair deck. So there is a high chance for Involve Despair very quickly. Let's see the card. He can uh, remove Sacred Fire, but he probably won't. Alright, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense, and we can start doing cards. I just want to milk this Bank Buster out of all the value, and we are back to 16. So even though uh, the Sacred Fires don't seem to be, you know, the hottest right here, because everything has 3 toughness, uh, we are getting so high on life, and they will be useful to remove Kiki Jiki. Alright, so, I definitely want to heal a little bit. Let's see if it goes through. Like, that's an interesting choice. Man, but I'm actually playing really bad. I should do it at his upkeep, probably. He has more mana to counter, but that's not something he would counter. But to be fair, if he countered this one, we could go for Jaya. Yeah, and kinda protect her, but she dies to invoke, so it wouldn't be a best play anyway. Yep, he will appraise a lot of stuff. We still have Farewell and Bangbuster and Celestus, so I'm kinda comfortable. Like, we are definitely not in the bad spot right now, but we are fighting. He has four cards, I will have four cards during my turn, and two extra uh, in the graveyard. Those sacri sacred fires are actually pretty useful against Kiki Jiki. And he has chosen this one. I won't lie. This is the this is a nice one. This is a nice one. He knows Bankbuster is nearly out of value. So we might as well do it. He has only two mana. If he removes the token, that's actually a bait. I don't mind it. He did not. Alright. So I think we will just go for it, right? Let's see the reaction. It, se it seems like no instance. By the way, we are at 20 again somehow. Like, huge brain play would be to uh, block with Kiki Jiki, I guess. Then it doesn't die to Sacred Fire, but it's probably not worth it. And this is really important. So let's make sure. It's as hard to counter as possible. I cannot go for Make Disappear. I cannot pay for, but then he needs to get rid of a prizer, so he needs another creature. He already played two, I think. Alright, nice. So we got a little bit of value from our graveyard. 
and we are at 22 to 17 like suddenly we are in the lead but we have no card advantage at the moment we don't have Cel celestus was a huge deal and i mean sacred fire will do the work like we are attacking for more and we burn his goblins so first things first if he blocks i actually don't mind it even though this is a nice burn for me uh, i still prefer to play jaya I'm really considering for welling, but I don't think it's it's really be best play. Let's go for Jaya first. Man, does he have a counter? I, I'm so bamboozled. He should play it by now. But maybe, maybe not. Some have said there is no subtlety to destruction. You, know you may play this Those card this turn. Minus one is so powerful. First, let's see if it goes through. No sense to play land. Let's see, if that's the counter spell, we, we know how to play. Alright, so he can deal three damage. It means we will make a token and just try to build our board. Like, those tokens are really, really good. If he removes the token, attacks, it's still three damage, so Jaya survives. Four cards, it all depends how good his cards are, how much card advantage they give. But by the way, Mono Red does not exist on the ladder today. You know, the <laughs> most popular aggro deck in the meta, it's not here today. I mean, I would, I would block. So he, he might remove it just to prevent the block. But it means that he needs to attack again. Also, he didn't go for the Bang Buster, which makes sense. He can remove all the creatures, all probably. Got? I wonder about minus one on Jaya. This could be a good play. Sacred Fire is pretty dope. Alright, did he cycle cards? I actually should have noticed. I think it was Fable and Takenuma that, that got cycled, or those two. I actually missed it. Because he will get cycling again, and if he cycled before, there's high chance he needs cycling again. I could just get rid of all the board, right? Alright, alright. Oh, but I, I want the artifacts, probably. Yeah, let's not exile it. Creatures, enchantments and graveyards. And we are left with Planewalker that he cannot answer. That's my idea for the, for the game. We have three mana. Oh my god, I should have played this land. Oh man, I'm actually misplaying like crazy today. And he indeed had to make this appear. Okay, but we can go alternate plan. But this was a mistake. I prefer farewell over anything else. Especially, especially that make disappears are not great at this stage of the game. And I'm not playing this round. This is a shame round. If I play it, he knows I'm, I'm a dummy. So I'm not doing it. <laughs> However, we can kill this and we can start go for the to go for the damage. No, I'm not playing this land. I pretend I don't have it. He stepped out, so no reason to do anything. And let's just make sure that we have more dudes. And the sacred fires absolutely uh, gave so much value against all the fables. It's funny, you need to pay 8 mana, okay, but still, you can answer Fable without going card negative. Yeah, he really wanted the cycling. All, all from now on is the result of my huge mistake. Because he wouldn't cycle those cards, he would have only a Bright and an Island. Alright, that's fine. Like, we are really closing in, and our stuff is just better. Alright. So this is the play. We play everything main phase just to pump the little guy. Alright. Alright, let's pretend we just drew it. <laughs> oh, I feel so ashamed. And uh, non-creature, right? Alright, so this will... Okay, okay, okay. I see how it is. I see how it is. I also see that I can hit you for a lot. I think we are winning this, guys. That's absolutely crazy, but I think we are winning it. He has one top deck. 
to protect against all of this and we can even use Jaya for the card advantage. One more hit. He has a blocker, but we can make more dudes, so this will attack and this. He saw the card, it wasn't what he needed. I cannot believe we outgrinded the deck we are not supposed to beat. We are anti-aggro deck and we beat control with all of this stuff. Alright, so we are going first with a standard all of my six drops in the opening hand uh, situation. <laughs> I have the Emperor and Big Score, so that's why I'm keeping it. If I was on the draw, that is 100% Mulligan. On the play, you can actually, you know, sneak by with some more expensive spells. Bankbuster, probably the best draw of the deck right now. It give, Against this kind of deck, you want extra cards and you can fight whatever they have. You know, in time. I really don't like this combination. Like, they, they both compete for the same mana. It seems really popular for some reason, but I just don't think it's... Is it good? Like, maybe I missed something, but they basically... One of those creatures cannot use the ability, basically. Three damage, sure. Like, with this deck, you can go really low on the HP, because you will gain it later, so you don't care. As long as you get some kind of advantage, it's worth it. Alright, let's draw a card. I hope it's a land. Just do, let's not get mana screwed. Again. Let's not get mana screwed. Again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's glorious. Okay, okay, it's fine. As long as we draw it, it's absolutely fine. This is the show that turn. So let's let's make it harder. Our opponent definitely does not want to use half of his turn to remove the smoldering egg. Even even cut down means the then he cannot play on curve. And playing on curve is huge. Enjoy your damage. Yeah, as long as we can get lands, uh, we are absolutely golden. Uh, it's really hard to use my full turn just to try to draw my lands. Okay, that's perfect. Now we should be set. We should absolutely be set. So we can go for what? Two mana march. Or we can just go like this. Nah, I think this is the Emperor turn. I could draw with the Bangbuster, I guess. Maybe that was a better play. Maybe that was a better play. I'm not really sure. But I, I don't value Emperor super, hard, super much. So if he just goes and kills her, I'm fine with it. Invoke. Before the attack, that's interesting. Sure. But he did it, he he drew only one card and dealt four damage. That's not the biggest deal. And we are playing clans. I mean this is pretty good so far. A double white. Yeah, we cannot tap better than this. So let's make sure that we at least get maximum value. I take one damage, but we start to be on the offensive. Let's see how many invoke the spares. Let's see how good of a mono black player he is. <laughs> like between like three invoke the spares in top 20 cards, he's a really good player. At one invoke, eh, just standard percentage. <laughs> I sense another one. Very good player. Very good player. <laughs> oh my god, it's always the same game. Card conscript, alright. But it's absolutely fine so far. Like, we are at 7, but we have a lot of options. As long as he doesn't go another Invoke Despair, we should be okay, kinda. Let's see how it goes. I can sacrifice the pilot just to counter the conscript. I will also see my card. I don't want to re-tap out. Oh, okay. That's fine. Like, it seems really good for him, because he thinks he can burn us, but he doesn't realize how much life gain we have. Yeah, he's going for the full burn plan. Let's see the attack. Perfect. First things first. Let's get rid of the Tenacious Underdog. Nobody likes you, my friend. I might actually go for one big score. We'll see. We'll see. I think so f as long as he doesn't have invokes, we are pretty fine with all, all what's happening right now. So he will kill it. And I will kill it. <laughs> yep, we are doing stuff. Both of us are doing stuff. Alright, forward. So 
That's another bank bust. That's a really good draw. So we can go for the full value game right now. I mean, I don't mind this one damage. It's actually really good because uh, we, if the creature was here already, that's more pressure. Right now we don't really get anything. And that's a perfect farewell target. I think he's playing really into our advantage lately. Let's get this. And I think we can big score if the card is not great. We could just do it, but it's not strong enough. Do I discard it? It's a good card. I don't care. I will use it later. This is a good discard target. So, I mean, creatures, even though I have Graveyard, his is more scary. Everything except artifacts. See ya. Alright, and we can draw another card. That's perfect. Down to three. As, as, as I said, as long as he doesn't have Invoke the Spurs, we absolutely crush this. Well, that's some desperation play. Uh, it paid out, of course. He didn't go for Liliana, that's interesting. Alright, let's see the, the triggers. That's really important. I actually won't draw a card. Alright, and now he cannot do it, right? Yeah, this is the moment. And he got greedy. And that is the punish. So he can activate for one mana, but he cannot go to 3-3 because this one did not resolve and it's not a cleric. Right? It has to be a cleric. So he has no way of saving it. Perfect. Free value. That's what you want to see. And I mean, Fable is pretty good. It also uh, gets rid of Invoke Despair. We have Enchantment, we have Creature. We will draw a card. We have him. So even... Like, sure, that is, of course, scary. You monster. You absolute monster. But it's fine. We'll, as long as we have Bankbuster, we have such a card advantage. Just invoke despair is the only problem. Sure. We can kill her. However, I do not want to discard any of those cards. I mean, this one is... It's also a great card, but this one I can actually discard if I super care. And we also killed Liliana. I think that's a scoop incoming, right? He will explode in a second. I don't even need to use the removal. I can just directly kill it. I could go for the face, of course, but I'm greedy. I want full value from every single card. Yeah, and this will be a smoldering egg, because we can flip it next turn. And that will be a lethal. I think in next turn we can directly kill him. And that's fine. Let's see what the what the target will be. We even have great target for the him. That's an interesting choice. And at this point I do not care about farewell. Yeah, let's draw something else. So four counters here. Some extra lands. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. At least we have good discard targets, right? And let's heal just to show that we were nowhere near that. Yeah, that, I think the game is absolutely over. So, we crew this one. And as you can see, we have so many win conditions. Alright, we cannot crew this one without losing the damage. So let's just hit like this. I can him for two damage, but let's just give him this one occasion. He's at one. He's actually at one. That's a bang buster. Way too slow, unfortunately. He would need it like two turns ago. That would really help him. Right now, I don't think there exists a card that will help him in any way. Yeah, we can just... This dragon deals so much damage if you end up with it fully. Whatever, so he's 2-4 and he will die to the air, of course. We could kill it, but why if we just win? And of course we are not sure. You can also copy this, attack for 8 and start burning everything. Alright, and we are going first with Bangbuster, so we really love to see it. Let's see how our opponent plays. And yeah, with Union of the Third Path, we should have enough time. With Big Score, we can ramp into Farewell. And that's actually such a nice combo. You can just play Farewell much, much easier. And we play our planes. Sacred Fire. I kinda like it. 
Like, man, this is my one of my favorite cards. Like, I love to play it. It's just, okay, maybe not Helix, but it's, it's nearly there, okay? And I don't need to stress out how important this draw was. If we miss the land draw, we would be super behind, but currently we are actually... Yeah, we are ahead. We are super ahead, actually. So you know what? It's not uh, anything with blue mana. It means that big score can absolutely go off a dance step if we care. We can also uh, get rid of Sacred Fire. So this will be the Emperor, I think. So this should be a good moment to just go with Sacred Fire. It could be the Union, because if it's an Emperor, we want to deal to damage and we won't have enough for the flashback. All right, just because of this and we have enough Bang Busters to make it work. I'm not drawing cards, like I don't want to burn those treasures. They are super cool. If I play the bang, but yeah, we can definitely play one bang buster. Uh, you need to be careful about farewell because right now they can farewell in two turns, but it means we can draw two cards from both bang busters. Invoke despair. You know what? You got it, my friend. You force me to negate your five play. It's actually worth it, I think. The fact that he only gets one card. I'm absolutely fine with it. And you know what, let's keep drawing cards because I want to hit a land. And when we hit land, we say go. All right, uh, is this the smoldering egg? It absolutely is. Because like we have different threats. We have bang busters. I drew from the wrong bang buster. It should be this one. I, I misplayed. This can be big. It can cost you card at some point, especially in this turn, because this is a farewell turn. So maybe I shouldn't play this one. I mean, bro, <laughs> like, come on, this, he's just chilling, playing Invoke the Spurs every turn. Well, super annoying, not gonna lie, absolutely annoying. Uh, let's hope that he stops at some point, because like, if he had infinite Invoke the Spurs and just plays every single turn, like, we probably don't beat this kind of deck. So, what do we do? Uh, let's not go super hardcore all in with the with the bang busters. We have enough on the board to make it count. And I guess at some point we can actually start burning his face if he doesn't do anything. Like this those two get back to 12 damage 12 life already. So no, that's not a lot. Minus two or the card. Oh I I see. I see how it is. So I would guess he has a remover, right? Or maybe blocker? Inferno. Oh, okay, so this will be a lot of invokes. We definitely need to start doing stuff. First things first. Let's draw one card. Jaya is amazing. And all the treasure tokens are also really, really great. Alright, so this will be definitely Sacred Fire. Now we can keep Threaten the Sorin. I mean, I could play another Sacred Fire, but I want to force him to react first. This Bangbuster has no cards. Uh, I think he either has removal against Bangbuster, or he doesn't have one at all. I mean, if he activates Mishra's Foundry... Well, my friend, I will make a stop just to make sure that we don't go into blockers. See unearth. <laughs> oh, that was the best case that he actually does not have removal. So, thanks to burning last turn with Sacred Fire, uh, we can deal 4 damage and kill this, right? Uh, let's play land, that's for sure. So, he has invoked the spare probably again. This will be double one. <laughs> it's so hard to beat, he's just spamming invokes all the time. So for this reason I'm keeping up the Emperor and I want to draw a card with Bangbuster and then we have two treasures left. You will actually do it, you will play the third one, right? If not, we are absolutely prime. I'm doing this first, just to be sure. And next time we play Jaya, after attacking, so after he reacts. And of course we make as many dudes as possible. He cannot sweep at instant speed because he has not enough red mana. Two is absolutely fine. So we already got the value. We got the card from him. This Twinferno is scared because he is keeping it up for Invoke Despair. 
So we need to pressure him enough so that he feels uh, that he needs to do something. And you know what? We can actually burn him super hard very quickly. As long as we hit... Oh, that's a nice one. I really like this draw. Karn, my bro. If he didn't kill anything main phase, uh, it means he cannot kill the pilots, I think. Otherwise, he would just do it. Man, that's 10 damage. I can nearly burn him from there, like directly. This is 4 damage, Angel is 4 damage, so we can deal 8 directly, even without anything new. So let's see the play, let's see the play. He probably should go for double bank buster removal. Exiling car, oh my god, he exiled the removal for this. That's the fun part. Uh, he's defending like we are an aggro deck, but we are actually a control deck, we don't mind it at all. Like, as long as he gets rid of all the cards, we are fine. The only problem will, of course, be uh, Invoke. And he can cast it every single turn. He had already two. He should have, like, 12 cards without this card, at least. So, what is the play? Jaya. He stepped out. He cannot react to this at all. And, honestly, I think we force this. If he has any kind of sweeper, he needs to play it, and that's a lot of mana. And the only sweepers that work... Invoke Despair, yeah, we don't want to get into Invoke Despair. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the board, that is good enough. And I will probably play Sacred Fire at Dance Step. I just burn one treasure, and it's extra to damage. I don't want to play Karn, because if he gets top decks Invoke Despair, he plays this, double Invoke, I lose all the Planewalkers, all the creatures. That's mean. That's actually so mean. It's either Karn or Bangbuster. And that's a hard choice. Both of them draw cards, and both of them are super annoying. Path of Peril. Sure. Not some serious burn, but he's down to three cards. Every single turn, it's lower and lower. And we can start burning a little bit, you know, just to pressure our our friend, just a little bit. Perfect. I kind of want my cards, but this is the responsible choice. This is the responsible choice. And let's go for this kicker, kicker. Also, we attack with the bangbuster, so it's even better. And we still have the Emperor. Like, the burn is, is serious in this deck. Don't underestimate it. Like, we already burned him for 6 damage directly. Without even hitting his face once. <laughs> and he's down to 9 already. 9, this is 7. And, you know, Archangel, like, like it's really close to just him being dead. Even if he sweeps everything, so burn down the house, doesn't kill Jaya. Farewell doesn't kill Jaya. And we have so many different threats. We have Bangbuster as an artifact. We have Planewalker and we have small board, but it's threatening enough to force reaction. All right, man, that's a weird one. Like it can go absolutely amazing as long as we draw a one single land. And then we are absolutely set against any kind of aggro. It won't be aggro, will it? <laughs> and we will miss a land draw. No, it's all falling apart. Oh no! <laughs> I could. It's always like this. It's always like this. That's a great game of magic. I absolutely enjoy it and I feel absolutely fulfilled. <laughs> so basically, our opponent get, is getting three time walks every single turn and he's just, you know, playing himself against us not being able to start playing the game. Finally, all right, that's huge. That's absolutely huge because he tapped out Hoping that we will continue to get mana screwed. So he went a bit greedy. Also, he tapped main face I, I don't really understand this play. I Honestly, don't think there's any reason to go main face on this one. This is a control deck I know genius So March is good I think those two might actually... No, no, one definitely, but I think I need to cycle two of them, and Fable is really good. Oh man, that's so lame. <laughs> All of those cards are really good. I will cycle only one of those. First things first. Yeah, he will probably remove it, because he knows that we are mana screwed. 
So he actually tapped fully just to get rid of this small token. Interesting. We can go up to 4 mana, guaranteed, or just go with another Fable. I think continuing to pressure is the way to go. You know, we are a Fable deck, all we do is play Fables every single turn, and let's see if, you're, if our opponent can keep up with it. But the start was absolutely up this month so far. We are still getting mana screwed, by the way. One fourth of the deck, three lands in total. So, uh, after so much land, I actually need to cycle cards, you know, to be consistent. We needed to cycle two of them. We are not playing land, because our opponent still thinks we are mana screwed and he prioritizes Goblin much higher than it should be. Because he thinks that this way he can prevent our cargo. And then we say, haha, nah. And I have no idea what to do with it. <laughs> I think big score is for later. It's not a bad card. So it's either the Emperor main phase or Bankbuster into drawing cards. And I'm not sure which one of those. Uh, what they have... I think Planewalker is probably the most annoying. Though they have Binding. Let's play like this. I think this is the play. It's just, you know, more stuff on board. Bankbuster is one card. And as you can see, they play very weird card. Like, it's a great card, but a lot of those in the main board. So, pretty unusual deck from our opponent so far. I want to force a sweeper. Like, this is overall pretty annoying. So, this should be the Emperor, right? This should be the Emperor. And he really wants to play it. So we might do it like this, I think. Piggy jikis are so annoying you want to, you know, force your opponent to deal with them somehow. It still might be the Emperor. And for this we either take the him or just big score if he doesn't do anything. And now he's in the picker because he wanted minus two on something. And right now he doesn't have great plays. Nothing is stopped. Nothing can be exiled. Kiki Jikis are still here. And at any point I can play a creature and copy it. Haha! <laughs> we knew about it. Alright, we have two ways. We can use this opportunity to big score, but all of our cards are pretty good. Yeah, so I think we just go for the him. Yep, that's a token, right? Let's give him the decision first, even though there's not... It seems that there is a decision. Alright. I mean... I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, that's probably as good as it gets for us. We literally uh, answered Emperor card for card, which is basically un impossible. Right, Little Dragon? The flame is... Well, it's holy. Like our bolts. And I really like this card, it's pretty fun. One farewell to go, but look at his cards. It's not a lot of cards. And I mean... We can go Aether value game, or just go Archangel and try to push for damage. Honestly, I think this is okay. We don't need spot removal, and the fact that we can put a counter on something and make sure that next turn we can start making Samurais and then, you know, counters again. Like, I just want to keep up the pressure every single time. That's a good card for him, gives him time, and that's what he needs. But still four cards, and we do have Emperor. I'm using it first. As you can see, the only way he answers whiteboard is by something like Farewell. So the faster you spam them, the better for you. First damage, perfect. Bankbuster is one of the most important cards, honestly. Do I want to risk it? Yeah, it has to be a hard counter spell. And he doesn't have a counter spell. That's really big. Also, at some point, we get back the, the thingy. And it will become a huge dragon that burns. You know, like our deck. Everything burns here. That's another for war. Artifacts, creatures. Well, I did not expect he gets the second one so quickly, but it's still fine. I mean, let's keep pushing the stuff every single turn until he weavers sooner or later. 
And putting counters is always nice. I could exile cards, but it's not a good deal. With 26, our Sacred Fire is a bit worse, because you know, nobody plays Sagro today. At least when you play this deck. When you queue with control, you will get Mono Red all the time. <laughs> like, Mono Red is the most popular deck right now on the ladder, but nowhere to be seen today. Weird. Very, very weird. Alright. I mean, we can discard cards. 38. I think it's worth it. So let's get rid of this one. And you know what? This is basically the same as just cycling it, so we might as well. It's just more mana efficient to do it like this. Make the board white. Two firewalls gone. And he needs to keep answering those creatures every single turn, and we keep him at four cards. And we are starting to go through. That's pretty big. Alright. What is the play? Either Big Score or Celestus? I mean, this will be a Celestus. I think I'll go with Celestus. It's hard to counter, and we can start cycling all the lands just to keep the pressure up. It's also extra mana, and that will help in some scenarios. We also have Farewell, but we, like right now, we don't need to use it. Like, look at this, since like five turns, every single turn, our board is scary and demands some kind of answer. And if he doesn't answer, he loses his buffer. And he doesn't have infinite butter. <laughs> butter. <laughs> buffer. And we already start to get some extra cards, which is sweet. So as you as you noticed, I nearly never play land before attacking. Because I always want to give the wrong information to my opponent. We split them equally. Actually this can go 4-4, four, four. this is 3-3, three, three, because this has ability, this doesn't. I know Samurai has ability, but let's be honest. It doesn't. <laughs> Sorry, Samurai. You you know the truth. The Goblin is just so much better than, you know, Samurai that have trained his whole life to to fight the battle and there's just random Goblin Shaman and it's better. Alright, let's play the thing. And uh, this is enough to force, I think, the Sweeper. So we go with the big score now. I could flip, but I have pretty decent cards, I don't need to cycle them. I'm not sure how many for worse he plays. Also, that was pretty weird decision to go for the discard. Like, he has no value. Uh, what can it be? Shigeki. Well, that's a lot of value, that's for sure. I think this means big score, right? We will draw a land, so let's go with a Ganja. That's not the card that we will use too much. Alright, and we have a lot of treasures. We can go 4, 5, 6. So we can get Leyline Binding. If we can flip the dragon, that would help so much. He will go creatures and artifacts. Problem is that he will have a lot of mana after it, like 3. And that's enough for counter spell. He also goes for the Gravers. Well played, well played. So yeah. Let's do the thing. Do we go with the... Nah, we, we won't be able to flip it really. So let's just make sure that we get some extra mileage from this. And he's playing such a greedy deck. Basically he doesn't have cheap removal at all. Only sweepers and shigeki. Like, he starts the game at 10 mana in the mono red meta, so that's super greedy. But it definitely helps against decks like ours. You know, the pairing is really fortunate, I would say. Anyway, I guess we just pressure with Damper every single turn, and we just see where we go. He definitely can keep doing it forever, though. So that's a bit scary. But every single turn, since, since like six turns, we are making enough pressure to, you know, force him to keep reacting. We dealt 9 damage so far, if not the life gain that would be so much easier because he would be at 11 and we can start thinking about burying them. Right now at 21 we have, like we don't have this option available. So do you go another farewell for those two cards? Shigeki is exact. Alright, he went for the Emperor, alright, absolutely fine. 
Still five cards, but it is possible he has more Shigekis. If he is playing for the for the lands, it would suggest that he has Shigeki, because every second land is basically a free card, so he doesn't mind losing this one so much, as long as he doesn't die. We might use uh, Sacred Fire to just uh, flip this thing. I mean, do I want to flip? I like my mana. I mean, farewell isn't isn't the worst. I think I should flip this and probably this. They are not the best cards, and we we can do better. And I'm not making any kind of jokes here. Let's attack. Let's get the treasure and see if there's reaction. Like goblin is always scary, especially if, as long as we have a lot of cards. All right, four damage. That's nice. Uh, Farewell does not hit a planewalker. So, I think we'll just get the card. Alright, let's see the, the cards. Tear Asunder. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of targeted removal and it's not damage based. Unless I want to go for power stones and try to win this like this way. That's really interesting, but if it doesn't work we are super behind. I might do it later. I chickened out. I'm not sure if we can, you know, have calm for so long. Let's go like this. I will pay three. And let's get one of the three lands. <laughs> oh yes, the true power of drawing more lands than you can afford to draw. Alright, that's fine. Sacred Fire will be helpful against the Emperor, probably, unless he pluses. Alright, and this will be plus, I think. I'm not sure, I think March is not great. I might actually trade with this Samurai, it's worth it. Then I might, yeah, I might farewell and get my stuff back. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, attackers. And I protect Karn, which is super amazing. So he gave me the option. Man, he's down to three cards on me. I'm scared for Shigeki though. Farewell is really huge overall. Do I want to kill this? Oh, that's a hard choice. I think Farewell might be countered, so let's not go super greedy. That's unfortunate timing to flip Kikijiki. Huh. He, he has so much mana. If he has Shigeki, he gets all he gets back all the cards, right? I mean, we can kill Emperor otherwise. We could just march this for one mana and then Sacred Fire this. Then he farewells. Oh man, th this is hard game. We have really many options right now how to play this one out. Smoldering Egg is not the biggest play of the of the game. So let's just make sure that we force him to do something. He has still three cards. I'm not sure what those are. And we can Sacred Fire this. I'm so scared about End Step Shigeki. I don't think we can beat it. Not this turn. If I farewell, I lose my Kikijiki, but I get the Smoldering Egg. Go how you think. I mean, I mean, I'll do it. I have a lot of mana to pay, so enchantments and gravers. I know, I know, but if it goes through, it means no Shigeki. Oh no, let's see if he touches the graver because if he does, it means he's counting Shigeki. No, he, he already got the next one. That was exactly what we wanted to avoid, so that's that's literally the, the play we wanted to avoid. Oh my god, that's so... <laughs> oh, I hate it. I actually hate it. We get the egg, but that was so brutal. So, he can kill Karn. For this reason, we might as well draw card. And I think I will pay just one. Uh, I will pay one. 
Oh my god, the sh Oh, yeah. Karn, as always, drawing infinite lands <laughs> since forever. Oh man, I don't think we can be beat this Shigeki. That was way too much. And he already got the second one. That's so unfortunate. Alright, so we can go smoldering. I can force him to... I, I think we have to go all in a bit. If he farewells... Uh, the problem is that he can basically do everything. He got 11 extra cards. Even though we drew 8 more than, than he did. He's taking like 11 of his best cards over and over and over. So we exile every Shigeki, but he got enough of them. But to be honest, that's such a slow deck. Definitely helps against anything that is not aggro. So we are in a very bad matchup overall. Especially with this kind of draw. I think we play one more turn. We see what we draw. What are our sweepers? Like we have farewells, right? I think I have one more, but I'm not sure. Yeah, one more. We have angels. Like we have plays that we can make to come back from this, but it's it's super hard at this point. I think it has to be Jaya. And let's get some monks, because right now we want to make sure that we get as high on cards and power as possible. Like, we need to flood the board, kill the Emperor and try to stabilize. Uh, Farewell does not answer Planewalker, and he's out of Tira Sanders in the hand. At least as far as I know. Never mind. <laughs> this guy just has everything. However, we will get one extra draw. Man, this is, this feels so <laughs> bad. <laughs> he has so much power. Like, if you are going Shigeki deck and just ignoring early game, you are so favored against an uh, balanced deck. Alright, so let's draw a card. We can, of course, remove something, but I can do it next turn, basically the same. Uh, basically, the, as well as right now. That's okay card, I guess. Alright, this is actually pretty decent. We don't care about HP in this matchup. Emperor is scary, but Archangel is much scarier. Okay, one down. And I mean, we have to keep plusing and just making sure that every single turn he needs to answer the monk. I think that's the play. We cannot crew. I mean, I could theoretically crew, but then I'm, I'm risking all this value and I cannot win without the Bangbuster card, so let's keep going. Man, this suggests another Shigeki in his hand. That's the only reason you lose all the value and just go for extra land. Season of Renewal. Man, he's just going all in on the grind. Oh man, such a greedy deck. I cannot believe. This is not what you want to draw against Monoret. Alright, alright, but that's interesting one. So, does Dark Angel. He can kill Jaya, but he doesn't. Because he thinks he can just attack her. And that's perfect. Alright, so let's see the attack. And that's a pump. Of course he will attack, so we might as well do it right now. We don't care about the HP, so that's why we don't go for the Union, we prefer more mana, just to make answers. Three cards again, one of them probably Shigeki, the third Shigeki of the deck. Man, if we can grind him out of those three cards, we, we can maybe still do it. But Seiju, good choice, good choice, my friend. Definitely worth this extra card and the land, uh, or the creature, should I say. Uh, let's go for whatever. At least our draws are a bit better, you know, so we don't draw another. <laughs> what? That was garbage draw. Okay, this is pretty good. This is horrible. So, let's go and see the real draw, because that will... Okay, th th like this is the this is story of my life. My opponent drawing Shigeki after farewell after Shigeki. I'm drawing four lands from the top. After this draw, I think the game is over. The last play. 
the last clive. Eyes open. Stay alert. That's a bank buster. I guess we are still in the game. <laughs> but we lost the Jaya because our draw is absolute garbage. I'm not sure if we can get back from this. Emperor, alright. Emperor means that this dies. He can farewell the artifacts and it's worth it at this point, I think. If we can save the Jaya, if we can save Jaya and Emperor, that was super quick. I think that means no Shigeki. Man, that's, Shigeki is an instant. He doesn't have it. That's a huge deal. And we draw at least two cards a turn. Next combo is making token with Jaya and plusing it with Emperor. That's actually pretty nice. That's more lands from... Oh my god, Arena. Like, please. Alright, finally. Finally, a card that does stuff. Alright. Alright, I think there's a chance. Let's make a monk. He will for one next turn. That's really important. But we cleared the board. And that's what counts. 34 to 35. Man, where is all of this HP coming from? We have two planewalkers, so fair one is uh, not great. But you know, it is what it is. And we split, so he needs to farewell anyway. This one card hurts, I, I need this card so much. Maybe we can minus one Jaya next turn, but it's probably still better to make tokens and force reaction every single turn. That's a farewell. You know, the fourth one of the game, I believe. And <laughs> this game is still pretty epic. Oh, are you freaking serious? That's that's absolutely the perfect draw. It is possible. And that's how I draw. Five lands from the top. I'll give him good game. That was a nice game, but I feel that in the end we lost because of the absolute garbage top decks.